So we're here at the amazing recumbent stone circle of Arbalo in the Peak District on the top of Middleton Common. We also have Gibb Hill, which is an ancient burial mound, just in the distance, like an outlier, but a mound. Uh, this is a really interesting uh, little spot as well, and I managed to get some aerial shots of that. And Arbalo originally had about 43 standing stones. Now there's a debate as to whether they're all recumbent and they were put there like this, or whether they were standing and they got slowly knocked over, possibly by uh, angry farmers, which does happen. But when you look at it from above, it kind of looks like a clock face. It's quite interesting. But originally there was the henge here, when I'm actually sort of slightly down inside the henge to get out of the wind. Then there was a mound actually built on the Henge, which has been destroyed pretty much. And then there was Gibb Hill, which is like an outlier mound, which had a burial kist inside it. And it's really quite an amazing site, potentially up to 3000 BC. And so I've been here before once, um, but it's just delightful to get here on a beautiful, beautiful sunny sort of sunset time in the August bank holiday and having seen um, Nine Ladies Stone Circle and Barbrook One today as well. It's quite an impressive site, this are below though, much bigger than both of those. Huge in fact, it's probably the same kind of size, almost a Stonehenge, but the ditch is even bigger, it's much deeper, it's more like Avebury and it's really quite stunning and you only have to pay a pound to come here to leave it in a donation box so if you're in the peak district um, near buxton or matlock or anywhere like that this is not too far away and only like 20 minutes away from nine ladies stone circle on stanton moor so this one almost looks like it's kind of attempting to stand or it didn't fall over properly some of these are huge and you can see these just these ones around the edge here towards the western side and this even looks like it's got cut marks on this one it kind of reminds me of some of the stones in orkney this one's pretty huge it's more like a diamond kind of shape much like we find a site such as avebury which is very similar to this in a way it's got a very deep similarity to this, the way the shape of the stones, the huge henge, and just the sort of placement in the landscape. You can see these go all the way around here with a huge henge, and then you get these ones in the centre as well, which are the biggest ones, I think. So whether they originally stood in the centre, or whether these were just around the edge and they got moved, it's almost like a cove. I mean, there is a suggestion, I think Aubrey Burl suggests that there was like a cove, like something in the centre, and this could well have been that. And although this was well known as a place of ritual, it seems like it still is, and you can see this offering bowl is being placed here to make a wish to the ancient gods. So we're just coming out one of the entrances here, more or less north-south. We're going to go up onto the bank to get a view inwards, but you can just see the huge stones here just going around the edge, sort of buried in the grass, some of them. It would have been very impressive when these were standing, and it's still strangely impressive now and unique in its current form. It really does look like a clock face. I first read that in the Julian Cope book, uh, The Modern Antiquarian, and it does look like that when you, when you look at it now. So perhaps that's what these were partly used for, was to tell the time, not only through the day and the seasons, but also through the year and the, the major, uh, the lunar moon cycles and uh, the 18.6 year metonic cycle. So there's probably a lot of that kind of stuff going on. It's a perfect spot for astronomical readings. Wouldn't surprise me if that was happening here in the prehistoric era. One other thing about Arbolo which uh, always intrigues me, is the work of Robin Heath, who found that this fits into a great three, four, five Pythagorean triangle, stretching across the whole, virtually the whole of Britain, the whole of England, from Stonehenge up to Arbolo, and then over to uh, Bryn Kedley D on Anglesey, all originally stone circles. This is now recumbent. Bryn Kedley D has become like a mound, but it originally was a stone circle. And of course, Stonehenge. This fits in with the theory he's been looking at of a great survey of Britain in prehistoric times with the Lunation Triangle which is a 512-13 triangle between Stonehenge, Lundy and uh, the Bluestone site in Pembrokeshire 
and you really have to question were the ancients marking these sites partly for that purpose part of a great survey of great britain in prehistoric times it really does suggest that there was quite an advanced uh, surveying technology going back into the neolithic uh, we found the work of tom brooks who's found isosceles triangles all over britain basically starting and originating all from Silbury Hill. And so there's other geodetic connections between this place and many others. This is called the Stonehenge of the North as well. That's the name generally given to it. And, and so we have to, you know, give this place some respect, put it back on the map. I mean, there's literally no one here. I've been here for like two or three hours. No one here at all. I mean, one, a couple sort of walked through here, but I would expect this place to be more well known. I'd be very interested to see what it looked like if the stones were upright. I think that would be quite a treat for any megalithomaniac making the trek up to the Peak District. So this is an interesting interpretation of what it looked like just on the board here at the site. And it's believed that in medieval times, the Christians who were feared, the pagans, pushed over the central stones in the cove and they were apparently upright. And there is a record going back, I think, to the 12 or 1300s, it could have even been the 1700s, when it was recorded that they were indeed standing. And you can see the mound here, just on the left part here. That is the sort of mound that would actually you know be part of the whole structure and if we zoom out so it's at an angle otherwise my shadows on it you can actually see the landscape and how it would have looked You can see, even on top of Gibb Hill, which is like the outlier mound, we have one of the stones. So there's probably a standing stone on top of here as well. Then we have the main Arbor Low Henge in the distance, directly ahead of us over in that direction. And so it looks like there was a burial in here. There's a kist. It was excavated in you know the early, I think, 19 or 1800s. And it got taken out and actually put in someone's garden, the excavator, as a kind of garden ornament. Obviously, he kind of got harassed about that and he ended up putting it back in the mound. And these stones that are scattered on the side and on the top of the mound here could actually be part of that. And this is the stone at the base of the mound on the western side. And all the way up, you can actually see little rocks sticking out, suggesting it was partly constructed by the stone, the natural stone that is from this area. So that is that does intrigue me. And it probably had chalk and soil and other various substances to create an energetic effect, which is very likely. It's part of the great Neolithic going into the Bronze Age culture of ancient Britain. And they were certainly very aware of how to manipulate and work with the natural telluric currents and earth energies. So all across the landscape, when viewed from Gibb Hill, you can see little notches and mounds on top of the hills. I wonder if that was part of the greater sacred landscape around Arbor Low and the whole Peak District megalithic culture. And there's Arbor Low itself, the mighty recumbent stone circle, Stonehenge of the North.